can actually strategize this draft a lot better for the team that suits the playstyle. And when you actually have everything done, if you do enough studies about the opposing team and what you want to have, you can actually have a better time. You can close the gap because of the six spans. And that's exactly what happened. Why? A few of the reasons why Miracle was able to defeat Gen G. Their drafting was amazing. And good luck if they have prepared in a similar way. I believe they can try to do the same thing. Very true. Amazing things can happen. Braxis Dragonshire banned, and our first pick, we will be heading to a Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, and today, you know, we've seen a little bit of a pattern developing. Previously, it was 3-0s in HTC Korea, but day one, we had a 3-2. Yesterday, we had a 3-2, and so today, I do believe that it is possible to see a 3-2. Will it be in our first series or second? I don't know. But for Blossom, they hope that it's not in their series. Yep, both, both teams very serious about the match. This is basically... Uh, what determines for Supernova if they are going down to the Crucible spot or... Of course, they're the newest team. They do want to stay right. here. There's good luck and Feliz. Of course, Feliz it seems like they're at the at the bottom. I don't think they can climb up too high. But still, there's a chance for them to actually go to 7th place. So, Supernova does have to be careful and think about lots of stuff. Let's see how the draft actually works out in that way. We do have 6 fans and... Didn't really see crazy strategies coming out from the other regions. Uh, lots of lots of Avatar. We did have one Valera game, though. That was a weird one. Shh. No one yeah, uh, let's keep that outside of HTC Korea. I, one thing I have been seeing is a lot more Zera Tool, um, mostly in Europe, and that's maybe like a regional meta uh, thing. But the Avatar really does pair well if you do want to go for any of these like super high, hardcore, hard engaged kind of. Uh, heroes, if you just want to get in there. We did see, uh, what was the weird ban that we had yesterday? Um, Illidan was yeah, the first ban. Yeah, we did see one Illidan ban. From what I know, and I've done little studies on the community and didn't really get a good answer, but I think it was supposed to be a ban for preparing for Chogao, and that's why Genji actually banned Gal. Ill Illidan is not the best counter, I would say, to Chogao, but the pros are saying, or the community has been saying, there are ways that you can actually have a way to get away with just the Illidan just having 1v2 Chogao <laughs> in that way. <laughs> with, oh my goodness. With, with Avatar, and Avatar can actually get extra soak. So I think that was one of the strategies that Miracle was trying to do, and Genji actually had a perfect read on they it. That's read why it we had first ban Illidan and first ban Gal from Genji, and uh, Miracle and Genji. I think that's exactly what happened. We don't know exactly why. The reason be behind the Illidan ban and how it actually counters Chogao really hard because if you get lots of skill damage, you do get still get the damage. Yeah, nobody's really thought about that particular interaction, mm -hmm. and really, it, it it's only super relevant between those two teams. Uh, since I, I don't know, I haven't been watching the other regions closely enough to know exactly uh, how much success or failure uh, Chogao has had. But here in HGC Korea, it's fifty fifty. So. Maybe you look for it in Miracle Games, maybe not outside of that. But to go back to your original point, we are seeing a little bit more Abathur popularity, mm -hmm. mostly in the band slot, but uh, it has been interesting to change things up with three, uh, well, three bands aside, six bands total, uh, because I, I feel like that it's just enough of a difference in the meta to kind of throw off teams like Gen G, who uh, are at their worst, which is not actually that bad, when the meta is changing, when it's in flux. And I think we got a chance to see that a little bit yesterday. Now we get a chance to watch it between Blossom and Gluck to see if they have been able uh, to adapt it all to the changing times. And as you can see, band number one, Gen Genji, 86%. I don't think any other hero can top that. Only a few weeks when Mayev first came out, everyone just thought we can't have anyone have that Mayev. That was the only one, and right, that was a very different Mayev than the Mayev we see now. That was a very uh, strong <laughs> hero to have at that point. But yeah, to go back to your point, we are pretty much always going to see the Genji ban only in some weird spot where you're trying to play like Rain or Chicken. Uh, would that be left up? I think we saw that happen uh, on day one, and it did not uh, go well. So. URL ban also makes a little bit of sense, specifically here on Tomb of the Spider Queen, but what's the final ban for Blossom going to be? Could still see maybe a Malfurion taken out, maybe even that Abathur if they don't want to allow any strange strategies involving that. And it is just a Rainer. If Maiev was open, 
maybe they would consider banning something else and giving rain or grabbing my F themselves to chain that up with some CC. It is Spider Queen, so Rainer does have pretty good wave clear as well after the rework. And massive damage, especially early game and late game. So basically all around, and you don't, you can't, you can get easier on this map with Spider Queen. So when you grab something like ETC, Anubarak, which Sean Connor said he does not, does not really like to play anymore, as he's not really, really feeling the best on Anubarak. Probably we'll see something like an ETC or some Johanna for the wave clear from Blossom. Okay, so Phoenix and ETC coming through for Blossom. The Phoenix, it, it's remarkable every time that we see that uh, it come through just because I feel like that is stepping up to be one of, if not the hottest pick along with Malfurion that actually is not banned. Hanzo also a contender for that same uh, kind of title. Blaze, of course, always going to be super solid. Uh, when it comes to looking for uh, for solo lanes, especially when you're Alice fan. The reason why we see a lot of Blaze pick is for lots of peel, not just the peel issue. The bunker comes in a safety tool for anyone, including himself. And that's a great sustain and also can provide some provide some TC along with ETC, so it was going to be possibly one of the better pair-ups with DTC. Luck takes it away, so it is broken in half. Awesome banning Tracer. Luck's not not the most favorable hero that they was they were going to play with Hanzo. The Alex ban, I think, uh, always a uh, good hero to take out. I think the synergy we saw yesterday uh, between uh, was it Blue Beetle and Judy really. Kind of highlighted in my mind well this is what the top level of alex play kind of looks like so now uh every time we see it banned i think it makes a lot of sense to take that one out of the support pool also karazim i would have liked to see maybe that banned. if you guys were watching the uh vsl twitter account we saw hong kono actually doing some some cool poses that may have hinted towards that karazim pick so it's nice to see that uh come through in game number one it's not Hong Kong, certainly. It's Mary Day playing it. Wishful thinking. And you did see a few palms, and also a palm from Saki last night, and never really activated. And, and Asthma, and this is the map for Asthma, as you would know. <laughs> okay. From all the brawls, guys, <laughs> it is time for the Asthma dunk time. And it is going to be Asthma dunk this time around, so I'm happy that he is choosing the correct skin choice. We got a little bit of a taste of Asmodan yesterday, uh, but Rich did not have a lot of success with that. Maybe this time is where we truly see uh, the Demon Lord get his uh, really time to shine. Final pick is going to be a uh, Jaina for Blossom. And I, I think when I look at Blossom's lineup, I'm like, okay, well, this makes a little bit more sense. But I. I still at least am a little bit uncertain how the new reworked Asmodan is really going to fit in for Gluck. They won't be too weak in the in the early game. But they do need to be careful because Blossom does have ETC. They have super powerful early game Sonya, Karazim, Jaina, so their burst will be blowing up many members at the same time. They have more than enough damage to get grab two more kills. And Bunker actually can kind of be countered by uh, Jaina's Blizzard so many times. We do see that often from time to time when Bunker is about to expire. We do see that Blizzard right next to it or right at the exit route. So they would get hit right when they exit or break that Bunker as well for the damage. So that's kind of the purpose onto Jaina and they needed a little bit more wave clear. We did have Kalfas two days ago. But this time it's going to be Jaina. You have Asmo, you're still not locking on level 1, but still the early game you do have to lose some power. Even just after 10, not really too strong, but securing still the same auto attack build. I like that there is still a um, a, a, a big way in, in that first talent to tell the, the good Asmodans from the great Asmodans, you can put it that way. Uh, the focus on building those stacks of Annihilation, if you are very, very focused on that over the course of the game. Also keeping in mind, you know, like rotations and macro. If you can't keep an eye on building your uh, Annihilation stacks, it just 
the late game is just so insane if we can get there. And of course, like you mentioned, uh, Spider Queen, a great map for Asmodan anyway. And away he goes, up to top lane where he will probably stay for quite a while. Now Rocks are actually in a little bit of trouble there. A little bit of healing comes through, but the Phoenix damage is too much. And Gondar will take the first blood for Blossom. Not that it was really... Not that Rockstar was really overstepping the the boundaries there. It was Blossom focusing pretty well. Rockstar survived for such a long time. Long enough time to actually survive. Healing came in slightly too late. And it is Malfurion, nothing like Uther. So he couldn't really survive. But that's only one. And very early game. So too much of a casualty done. As they weren't really missing for the solo lane. They still had the rotation going. And you couldn't... Blossom couldn't really turn in their gems, so Block didn't really didn't lose anything so far. That's true. Uh, we make a big deal about First Blood, but it didn't actually uh, make a very big difference there. Just seeing camp timings very similar on both sides. So not a huge difference just yet. Trying for a little bit of harass onto Overlord. But Overlord does have to be careful whenever he's out of that wall. Because, not just because of the ETC. There are lots of ways that you can just be first by the damage with no ZC. Karazim does a lot of damage. So and Sonya. Jaina Sonya is at the bottom, but even Phoenix. So basically, even without the ETC Overlord, he's got to be right next to that wall. And this is not the way that you want to see uh, your lane go if you're playing uh, a Lord of Destruction. So for Overlord, you may have an appropriate name. Uh, he has a little bit of extra company here, and even with the entire team gathered. Gluck are still not scary enough to stop Blossom from pushing into that wall. Even Wiz fighting Asgard off to the side won't be able to win that 1v1, but he's still keeping him away from rejoining his team. Luck the luck, they just need to buy time, making they make sure they soak in. Not to fall behind too long, as long as they turn some of their gems in and collect about the same amount as Blossom does. That should be okay. Blossom, their job is to they try to look for games because they have early game ETC Spider. That's exactly what you're trying to do. Luck is actually rotating in a safe manner, so that doesn't happen too much. Oh, good decision there by Honkono not to overextend for any kind of engage there. I I always get a little bit uh, restless when Honkono is looking for these sneaky flag attempts because sometimes he does go in a little bit too ham. Decided to back out there. Glad to see that that is not the case. So always keeping an eye on Overlord as well. Still kind of unused to seeing as the Dan in my games, but uh, he is getting a lot of company. But seems to be playing that lane very passively, not overextending too far beyond the wall. Great vision control, kind of forcing the way. Early pars flight, getting trying to get Rockstar, but healing this time is available for KCB. Not the same situation that he was in last time. Asgard doing a good job denying that turn in, but will be eventually pushed away. <laughs> Actually does get the deny it once again, even though he does take quite a bit of pain for it. Uh, eventually that sh should come through. Yeah, 33 to only 9, even though there are quite a few gems banked up for Gluck. So even past level 10, think about the extra damage that Blossom will have as a burst. Gluck, they sh are not really the team that does macro too well. But this is a smaller map, and depending on how much practice they actually had on this Asmodan strategy, may actually be super painful for Blossom to catch the rotation because Asmodan's kind of semi-global, lots of wave, Blossom, they're looking for fights, and Gluck, they may just say, we're just running away, we're not fighting, we're just soaking up, getting some maximum stacks on Asmodan, making sure we grab the kill, but Overlord, let's see. Yeah. Over. Very low, just get the Fountain that's healing over time. No dive just yet. And Overlord does survive. Even though Hong Kono's engages are looking fantastic. Rockstar might just get caught out again. Very low health. The healing can't come through in time. And Hong Kono there with the engage and the last hit to take another kill on the Rockstar. Second death, the first one didn't matter as much. Second one it will because they will get their first gems turned in. And that's going to create some gap. As they also did some damage to the walls even, because they had some wave clear. Luck, they were rotating a little bit slower, starting from the first death as well. So let's see which lane Blossom actually actually tries to push. Seems like they want to rotate bottom, even on Kona, prepping all the way to the side. 
Asgard not really having an having an idea of exactly what's happening. First wave of web weavers. And also yeah. it's because as Gaskar is holding 19, they want to bring that down to a level. Diving into the fort. Yeah, he's going to pop that Pyromania just Han to... Hanzo is still up there, but this is kind of risky even as a 4v3. Modern takes two and more shots from the fort. I mean, you can see why they were going for that dive. It's a very juicy target, right, to eliminate that many gems from the counter turn in. But they're making the most out of their web weavers, getting uh, some support in at least two of the lanes. Middle already taken out, of course. And that bottom push is especially scary. I'm glad to see that Rockstar and now KCB are coming down mm -hmm. to try to meet it head on. You but can't really day. have this something. Oh, sorry to cut you off there, but you can't really have something like this too often right. in a pro play. But this can happen because of the early rotation of Hong Kong. That actually destroyed a few waves. It actually denied the experience that Glug was supposed to soak by having Asgard there. So because Glug will actually get stronger by the time goes on, Blossom is trying to deny that experience because they will get stronger. They're trying to get the early advantage as much as possible, so they're going really aggressive right now. Mm -hmm. and, and even the advantage you're supposed to get from having Asmodan on your team, he's supposed to sit in his lane and then try to affect other ones. He's been brought down continually, having to join the rest of his team just because of how scary pushes like this one are from Blossom. They get, because of the, all that pressure, they do manage to stay there and steal the camp. Asma in trouble, gets 7 sided oh, seven Overlord. Sided. Overlord is out of there. No, he's not. He gets oh my perfectly God. healed with one. <laughs> no way. I cannot believe. KCB just providing the, the right amount of healing. How did team. that Salvo not kill him? Like, come on. KCB had one shot of move <laughs> to heal him at the perfect time. No, KCB is the real MVP for that one. Like, oh my goodness, Gluck. Uh, getting a little bit lucky there, but even still, they don't get the kill there, but they are able to go back and get another big, big turn in. Another Garrosh kill, though. Rockstar saved his teammate. A moral victory. Because we do see lots of weakness from poor Garrosh. He used to be just top tier. Oh, lots of fans. First grabbed all the time. They have lots of different ways of countering, and we do see here not just because of the counters from ETC to Garrosh. Actually, Garrosh does counter ETC somewhat softly. But when there is lots of burst damage, like the skills, the kill shots from Jaina, Poison Spear, even Phoenix is kind of bursty, so it actually breaks through the armor, so armor does not get the full value. Right, and I think especially when Garrosh first came out, it took players uh, kind of a long time to figure out exactly what it would take to kill him at different armor levels, because there, that mechanic is doesn't exist on uh, another hero to the same extent. So once people figure out, hey, you just burst them and it doesn't uh, give it the same utility, it's easier to take out. You see that happening a lot here. So uh, another big push off of a second Web Weaver wave in a row. And I think this one absolutely can go the distance unless Blood can find an opportunity to engage that they haven't been able to all game long. That's 200, 9 minutes, a little bit too late, and they are, keep us going down for 10 minutes. Still very healthy of all the members of Blossom. And Overlord gets really low, gets into the bunker. But what happens after? No, oh, Mary Day going deep for the kill. There's another Sepho coming through, and this one will be able to finalize the kill. No signs of stopping here for Blossom as they are going deep for the core off of two dead Glock heading for the fountain. And they might not even make it there. And Onkano says, no way you're getting, going back home. So much gems drop, but it doesn't even matter. They're going forward the core. Four levels different. It's a pre-10 finish. This I is game <laughs> over. They may just time it perfectly <laughs> at 10. Will they go for the time? I don't think so. They are going to finish it off at 9 minutes and 51 seconds. A domination from a very happy Blossom.